Hey, I'm Jim O'Hare, and welcome to showbizmonkeys.com. I'm all right. I'm all right. I mean, no consequence when you're playing with the fire. Move to the left, man. No uh, so I, I am here today with Hunter March, uh, this season's host of Netflix Blown Away. Uh, thanks for joining me today, Hunter. Of course. Do who do people tell you you look like? I've heard a lot of things. I've heard Dan Aykroyd, uh, from my great uh, my mother uh, or my grandmother in law's priest. He said that. Uh, I've also heard one of the bare naked ladies uh, a lot too. <laughs> so a wide variety That's of so funny. Canadian A minus to A plus celebrities. I kind of see, and and maybe I'm missing this, but I see a little bit of Mark Hamill. Oh. oh as a Star Wars nerd with a wall of lightsabers that are just off camera, that that just made my day. <laughs> You're like Mark Hamill, honestly, and I was gonna say this before I even heard about the lightsabers, but like also a young George Lucas when he was re- when he had the beard, he was real spry and everything. It's a good combination. Yeah, yeah, was, uh, I, you've just made my day. <laughs> so <laughs> I truly appreciate that. I'm surprised um, you haven't heard that. Oh, oh well, I am going to go and put that on my card. Like yeah. Mark Hamill and a young George Lucas. <laughs> yeah, I mean. great. Well, what was your act- reaction when you first heard that you got the opportunity to be the host for this season's Blown Away? My first reaction was, oh, I'm going to get burned. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to get hurt. These people are experts. Yeah. And then you have me walking in there like a real doof. Um, I mean, my first, re- my first real reaction was just excitement. I mean... It's always cool getting an opportunity to be on a show, uh, mm-hmm. especially when it's a TV show, especially when it's a Netflix show. Uh, but then for me, as someone who loves art, uh, it was uh, an inc- it was just cool to be on something that like I actually would watch. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of the other shows I've been on, I would I would never pick it on Netflix, uh, <laughs> or t- I would never stop on television to watch it. Um, but this show I was a huge fan of. And so for me, it was a dream come true. I mean, there that it's, it's incredible. The beautiful pieces of art that these last blowers create, but it looks so dangerous to me. Like just it's crazy. <laughs> it, it's like thousands of degrees and molten glass being like flung around. And uh, that's got to be overwhelming coming from a, a non glass blowing place. Also, I'm a TV host. If anyone is not prepared for things to be overwhelmingly hot or uncomfortable, it's a guy who, you know, the only reason my hands are callous is from a microphone. So, (laughs) um, but no, I, I'm a, I'm a huge, uh, I I love physical activity. I like being uncomfortable, you know, like Mm -hmm. I recently started doing all my own, uh, landscaping and, uh, lawn mowing and all that out here, which, I'm one of the few on the street who's taken up that himself, but I like being uncomfortable and being too hot. Uh, if it's something that's just kind of at all meditative. Yeah. And I don't think I could have been on something that was more meditative and more, uh, uh, exhilarating at the same time than a glass blowing show. And I did get the chance to blow glass one day. So I, I now oh, have an cool. appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. How, how was that experience? Like, what, what what did you make first off? And, and then what, what was it like? I made a, a, a glass balloon bear, um, which I was told repeatedly I should try to make a cup. Uh, and then they were like, even a cup may be too hard. Make a paperweight. I was like, how do you make a paperweight? They're like, you accidentally make a paperweight. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just kept watching. I'm a very, uh, I, I kind of zone in. Um and I watched them for like three, four weeks before I got the chance. And so that paired with having, you know, two expert glass blowers kind of help me and tell me what's going on as I'm doing it uh, and help me carry the carry the load of the second pipe because we had to make one part of the bear and then make the other part of the bear had great help. Uh, and it turns out it turned out really good. Like if you saw it, you'd be like, that's a glass balloon bear. Um, which was all I all I needed. Oh, that's cool though. I mean, not many people can say they've blown their own paperweight kind of thing. 
So that's that's cool. Now you've, as you mentioned, you have hosted some other shows, you know, cooking shows, uh, pop culture talk shows, dating shows. Is have you taken anything from those other experiences that really helped you prepare for stepping into the hot shop? I mean, everything, every every show I've done, everything I've done is always preparation for the next opportunity. I mean, on Sugar Rush, uh, it was just such a big show. It was my first like real big um, competition show. I did the game show before that, but very different experience. But Sugar Rush was like this, you know, 100 something people relying on you getting your lines right so we could move on to the next thing and mm -hmm. uh, kind of being able to balance uh, contestants and the other hosts and everything, or the judges, uh, and definitely took all of that into blown away. And then nightly pop, the cable show I did was just such a, I mean, for me, that was such a vehicle to learn how to be funny, uh, on television in a really, um, collected way where it wasn't like just throwing shit at the wall. It was like, okay, well, each episode is 21 minutes you are you know there's a main host who's going to have 10 of those minutes you're going to split the other 11 with another person it's like i knew that my role was never going to be hey this is what i really think of the conflicts happening around the world right now it's like no my role was to really listen wait for a moment to either jump in and be helpful and set someone else up or get my opportunity to say a joke and you know, when you're doing a show like Blown Away, where there's so much happening all the time, you don't want there to be a host that's like just biting at the bit to get his line out mm -hmm. and disregarding everything else that's going on. I mean, it's a really collaborative process being on any any production. Um, and I can only imagine when you've got these incredible artists doing their thing, <laughs> you want to give them the, the space to shine. Totally. Absolutely did. I mean, as a host a lot of times uh, it's easy to forget that you're not, they're not there for you. They're mm -hmm. there for the thing that's happening on the show. And the best uh, kind of the best response you can get is a few comments saying you did a good job, but just nobody saying that you distracted them because mm -hmm. if you're a good host, you just kind of allow everyone else to be their best self, to do what they need to do, to feel comfortable to do and say what they need to say but you're not the star. And if you are the star, it's usually because you're doing something wrong, you know, usually the mm -hmm. star. And then people are like, he's kind of obnoxious or she's kind of this or whatever. So I just tried to kind of get my, get my lines in and, and make the show go smoother. Awesome. Now on your social media, one of the things that um, you do is uh, ice plunges. Uh, <laughs> so did you ever get like sit in the, uh, the hot shop thing? Oh, right now I'd, uh, rather be in a in a bath full of ice water oh absolutely well i mean we shot it in hamilton in like march or april mm -hmm. and so it was really cold some days i mean it was you know 30 40 degrees which is mm -hmm. cold for me being from la so like <laughs> yeah. every day that we'd be in the hot shop especially for some of those uh when we're up on the balcony those are the hottest mm -hmm. moments the heat rises it's probably 120 fahrenheit um up there and so we come down and like the first thing we all want to do is just step outside and stand outside, lift our shirt up, you know, get the <laughs> air going underneath. And I mean, and it's, it's a winter in Canada and yet it feels like the best weather you've ever had in yeah. your life or spring in Canada. Oh, well, while you were here, uh, I also noticed that you did the uh, tower walk at the CN tower, which, you know, as somebody who's lived in Toronto for 25 years now, I will never do because I am terrified. <laughs> what was going through your head when you're up there? Like just this harness and nothing <laughs> like what was and for American friends who haven't seen it, this is on the cover. This is the tower on the cover of the Drake album where he's sitting yeah. tiny sitting up there. It's high. It's very, very high. It's really high. I mean, honestly, the only thing I was thinking is, man, I really want to do like a Spider-Man jump right now. Like I, I knew I was harnessed in. They didn't allow this. But I yeah. asked them if I could like do a running and then kind of go off the side of the CN Tower and land back on. And they're like, are you insane? <laughs> and, and I was like, I've been in a hot shop for the last five weeks. Let me do what I need to do. Um, but it was a cool experience. I had no fears, no reservations, because I knew at the end of the day, if something did go wrong, my family would never have to work another day in their life. So yeah. it was a win-win. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, oh man. But I mean, I guess, you know, once, like you said, spending those five weeks in a hot shop, you can do anything at that point. Yeah. But I would recommend it if you haven't done it, Matt, I'm sure with your, uh, podcast and your shows, whatever you're doing, I'm sure they might give you a nice big discount. Um, maybe even let you do it for free. So, uh, I would, I would ask, cause it, it is a cool experience. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's neat. It's quick. You know, you're up and down in 20 minutes or whatever. Um, and then you say you did it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, and you know what? I, I'm I'm getting up there. Maybe I'll make it, put it on my bucket list to, to get in there before I get to Yeah. Go. Find uh, a friend who's equally as scared, if not more scared, and then you can kind of be the hero being like, it isn't so bad. <laughs> um now you have a, a an advice book, um, TDH 51 True Story Collabs. If you had any piece of advice to give a contestant going into the hot shop what would it be? First of all, that book I wrote 10 years ago when I was like 20 years old or 21 <laughs> or something. So please do not read that and think it's an accurate depiction <laughs> of me. It's not an advice book as much as it is a collection of short stories. I just don't want people to think this arrogant SOB wrote an <laughs> advice book at 21. It was more just a collection of stories from myself and all my friends. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily produced or published with Scholastic, which was just a dream come true at the time. I want the book to sell really well because I feel like they must have lost money on that thing. So if I could get them some money back, uh, I will. One day when I'm really, really famous, I'll be like, everyone should go buy this book I wrote 40 years ago. Um, I uh, What advice would I have for new, for new people coming into the hot shop? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's the same advice I would give anyone in the real world going into any situation with other people, which is just, be nice you know like i think it's it's really easy to forget that you're not the only one who's uncomfortable or going into something where uh you're out of your element everyone's out of their element um and i feel like on every show i've been on it's like every show not just this one but there's always someone who maybe uh makes it a little clear that like they're uncomfortable or that and and it's okay to do that as long as you're nice to everyone else who's also going through the same thing. So I would just say that anytime you go into anything in life, a new job, just be really sweet. Everyone's going through shit. Mm -hmm. And if you're just open and a little bit vulnerable, but also a little bit, hey, I'm going to kind of keep some of that stuff down so I can be of service to others uh, in this moment. It's a good combination of things to be all the time. That's one of the things I've enjoyed about Blown Away. And I find this on the more modern competition shows, there's a more of a collaborative nature, even though people are competing there, there's not a meanness to it. It's like, we're all here to create our art or do our thing and, you know, be there for each other as well as for ourselves, which is, you know, I've really enjoyed about the show when watching it. Yeah. I think great British bake off kind of showed all of us that you can have a successful show with all nice people. Yes, um, yeah. But yeah, that, I mean, this season of blown away, everyone got along really well. And yeah, there is a part of, I think every producer mind that goes, yeah, but wouldn't it be great if they started jousting with the blowpipes? <laughs> um, and we had a great moment, but it's like, no, the, what's beautiful about this show is that it's such easy viewing. Um, because it's just kind, beautiful uh, artistry happening at the highest level. And yes, there are moments where there's tension, obviously. Someone breaks the glass, but it's a tension where you're not rooting against anyone. You're mm -hmm. just rooting harder for someone. And that's yeah. what's so beautiful about the show. Well, one last question for you. Um, every year, there are, there are some really just moments that blow you away, for lack of a better term. Without any giving any spoilers, was there a moment where you really had your socks knocked off this this year? Uh, there was a ton, honestly. <laughs> like I just I closed my eyes for a second and I thought and I realized, oh man, there's like every I would say every single round, every episode had at least one piece of art that like almost made me emotional looking at it because. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's really beautiful about art is that when it's done well, you don't see it, you feel it. 
Mm -hmm. And with glass, it's three dimensional. There's these colors in it that are not what you would ever see in a painting or a photo. I mean, it's iridescent, it's see-through, it's, you can put so much more into it. And, and again, even like the opacity usually lends itself to whatever feeling a good artist is trying to give you that, op that, that transparency might be trying to show you something like, Hey, I'm delicate versus a black, a fully black piece might be stunning and elegant, but it might be trying to convey like, Hey, don't mess with this piece. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's perfect. You know? So there's all these things they can do in glass that, uh, really, if you take the time to think about it, um, it could bring you to tears because this is an artist's life being poured into these pieces, the 10, you know, depending on how far they get in the show, 10 of their probably most stressful, but most thought out pieces, because, you know, they probably think about it for a long time before they come on the show and hope that the challenges align with some of their ideas. Um, but yeah, it, it, to me that I was blown away every single episode. Anything you'd like to share with uh, the audience before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah, actually, if you guys are a fan of Mark Hamill, you have to go to Matt's Instagram and check out. You got to post a story, Matt, when this comes out <laughs> with a side by side with Mark Hamill. Say I said it uh, I will. and just I will. see, see what happens. Maybe it's the maybe it's the smile in the eyes. I don't know. <laughs> oh, geez. You're melting my heart here, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Is Mark Hamill uh, Canadian? No, no, he's he's in L.A. He's he's uh, I think he's from the Midwest. So, oh, okay. yeah. So, but Dang, uh, I tried. Yeah. Hey, I you, know, you never know. Now, if I'm ever in LA and meet Mark Hamill in the street, we can go twinsies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Okay, all right. I'm gonna. I'll, if I ever meet him, I'm gonna say, "Hang here for one second. Let me get." <laughs> I will get on the first flight yeah. to <laughs> LA out of my own pocket. I Mark Hamill is like one of those people. It's like Mark Hamill and Kermit the Frog. Two, one, one real person, one sort of real per person. If I ever met, I would die happy. <laughs> Luckily, you look more like Mark Hamill than Kermit the Frog. Yes, yes, but I do have a banjo like Kermit. So, <laughs> never mind. I take it back. You're way more like Kermit the Frog. Um, uh, yeah, Matt. Thank you for the time. This is awesome. Oh, thank, thank you, Hunter, for for taking the time to to speak with me. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching the new season of Blown Away. Yeah, where are you located again? I'm in Toronto. I'm, I I literally can see the CN Tower out of the front door. That's right. Um, <laughs> okay, well, if I come back to Canada, uh, if we get to shoot another season, I'll try and find you and maybe we'll go do some stand-up or watch some stand-up or something. That'd be terrific, yeah. I'll hit up Comedy Bar uh, and uh, yeah. have a fun time. Yeah, I think I did Comedy Bar. That's the one with two. You go down the stairs and there's two different... Yeah, well, there's the, the small room on the right and the bigger room on the left. Uh, the small in. room on the right was a little bit, it was more filled every night because I, I I was there during playoffs. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah, the small room was great. I had a, a few great sets in there. And then the big room, I had one set that was like, you know, had 15 people in it. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm never doing stand up again. Uh, you never, you know, you never know. Some nights are better than others, but well, yeah, that'd be awesome. When you're in town next, we'll, uh, we'll hit a comedy bar. Yeah, we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much, man. Mm -hmm.